So, session is now being recorded. Okay, thanks everyone for uh, coming to uh, the 2022 Linux Plumbers uh, Presenters Training. Um, <clears throat> I first off want to start off well thanking all of you for attending and also for speaking. And more, actually more importantly, the thanks to sponsors. Uh, without the sponsors, this would not happen. We, <laughs> it, it's amazing how much an event like this costs and we, it's really critical that we get sponsors. So we really are appreciative of everyone, Meta, Google, IBM, Western Digital, Intel, NetApp, ARM, uh, what's that, DigitalOcean, OfficioSOS, um, OfficioSOS, oh, that's interesting. I think it's Matthews. Um, Microsoft, uh, Cisco, NVIDIA, Lenaro, uh, AWS, uh, Red Hat, and for a speaker's gift will be Google, Catchback is um, Collabora, T-shirt is Jump Trading, live streaming will be EPPF, video recording, Bay Libre, and um, really like to uh, give a special shout out to the Lynx Foundation. Um, you know, people don't realize how much they work for us behind the scenes. They cover a lot of logistics, and if it wasn't for Lynx Foundation, this would be so much more difficult to pull off. So I really want to thank everyone that's on the slide. Uh, next, um, again, we have a code of conduct. Uh, it shouldn't be too hard. Please treat everyone with respect. Um, if you treat everyone nice and friendly, you're going to be okay. That's, this is, should be self-explanatory. I don't think I should have to go into uh, the depths of this. If you could read it, please read it. Um, if you have any questions, um, just ask anyone on the program committee. Speaking of the program committee, or the planning committee, uh, this year um, I drew the, the short straw and became chair. Um, I want to thank James Bottomley, Chris Browner, um, Alice, I'm not going to try to pronounce the last name, but I'll probably mispronounce it, Paul, Mike, Kate, David, special thanks to Ted and Guy for um, a lot of the help in setting this up. It does take a lot of work uh, to pull up plan um, plumbers, so again, I really want to thank everyone that's involved. So, conference. Um, for the last two years, we were virtual for various reasons. Um, let's see. Ah, looks like I got a question. Am I joining from, um, let's see. I wonder if uh, Dave Woodhouse is on the wrong. He asked, just asked me on IRC if I, or on IRC, on back from Matrix. And so they let him know we started and ask him if he's joining. He's giving the uh, talk uh, tomorrow. Anyway, this year we're live and we're doing something different. We are going to try to be very much a hybrid event um, where, believe it, uh, even though we're going to be in person and in rooms, the room is just basically going to be one participant of the virtual conference. So all presentations are going to be used through BBB. We're not going to have people plug in into projectors. You're going to be plugging into the BBB server. Ideally, I, I just I should we should have a Chromebook in every single room that we're going to upload the slides. You could use the Chromebook. If you're going to use your own laptop, I would say you would log in to BBB, and if you have to use your uh, own laptop, you would just connect to the BBB server because that's going to be what's on the screen. What you see here is what's going to be in the rooms. So you'll see the per you could have we could have the picture of the person speaking in the room with the slide there on deck. If someone remotely wants to talk, they could either raise their hand, which is another uh, feature. You have a little, you know, raising your hand um, that you could do, tell people like, hey, I want to have a question. Um, or you can um, turn on your camera. We're going to ask, like we did last year, if you're not speaking, if you're not talking, if you're not going to participate, keep your camera off. But if you want to ask a question, turn your camera on. And that way it will pop up on the screen. And this way we could be able to interact with people both in the room as well as remote attendees. Hopefully just as well as we did in the last two years. Uh, it's three days. Start times will be uh, 10 a.m. That was kind of popular when in Lisbon. We had a late start uh, at 10 a.m. Everyone seems to appreciate that. Uh, I found out that people could stay up later than they could get up. So where you could come in at you know nine or we'll probably be setting up everything at nine, but 10 o'clock, the sessions should be starting. There should be plenty of time. We should still start on time and finish on time. It means that we will go a little bit later uh, at night. So this 
uh, presentation is going to basically uh, talk about um, using the new uh, BBB that we have. Like I said, even though you may be live in person, you're going to be using BBB to present. And you could ask questions. We're going to have catch boxes again in the rooms. Um, FYI, by the way, there is going to be, a, we're still going to have a mask mandate, which we're asking all attendees to wear a mask. If you're speaking, you do not have to have a mask on while you're up on stage speaking. If you're in the audience with the catch box, still keep your mask on to answer your questions and such. The, um, so audio, video, hopefully we have everything working. Um, webcams, again, this is for people, if you're remote, you want to make sure your webcam works, hopefully, because that's going to be how you're going to talk. Uh, make sure your microphone. One thing you probably noticed this year that's different than last year is when you logged in, you, well, some of, I see uh, some of you just did listen mode, but if you did uh, speaker mode, there was no echo test. So when you first log in, you come right in. You might want to make sure when you speak, you'll see your name up on the top in a little bubble. If you're using the conference here, you want to make sure that you see your name up there. Otherwise, your microphone doesn't work. I had issues with my setup when I first logged in. I couldn't log. This is why, luckily, I logged in very early to test this out. My system wasn't, uh, microphone was not working at all. I actually had to shut down Firefox and unplug my microphone, plug it back in, and then bring everything back up, and then I was able to connect with my volume. Also, by this little speaker down at the bottom, you'll probably see a little uh, speaker. Uh, has that's how you would change your settings if it picks up the wrong device and you want to switch devices you click on that little up arrow on the speaker icon and you can pick that there's also a webcam same thing uh, you can pick that up and um, to share slides um, you up we're going to upload the slides so ideally we want everyone to give their slides for that day uh, this includes micro conferences uh, especially in our conference runners. We want all the presenters, anyone that's going to present anything on screen to upload, give them the slides to you before your microconference starts. That way we could upload it. It's the same thing we had last year where the, as a presenter, you can, or can click on the plus sign. There'll be a plus sign on there when you're a presenter. I think you might see a plus sign now, but don't have all the options. And you can manage presentations where you can actually upload presentations at any time. Uh, the supports, you know, um, PowerPoint, ODP, uh, PDF and images and stuff like that. PDF is, uh, I think, the native uh, processing. So when you upload anything, it converts it to PDF. So if you're in a hurry to upload something, hopefully you have a PDF in to give because that would be the quickest to get uploaded. Once you go in there, you can switch. It's very easy to switch. It's very fast to switch from presentation to presentation. That's why we want people to give the uh, PDF, um, the slide or slides hopefully in PDF, but before the conference. That way the moderator, uh, or the you know, conference runner can actually switch between the presentations very quickly so we don't have to fight with people unplugging laptops, plug in laptops. Uh, if you have a demo that you want to do, there is screen sharing, which I'm going to show there as well. Uh, just FYI, screen sharing is the most uh, computational complex uh, processing that you can do. So if you have a video, there's um, there's ways at the bottom that talks about this, but there's live stream videos. If you upload to YouTube, there's a uh, easy way that you could just say, okay, uh, run this video uh, live from YouTube and it will go through VB and everyone, remote attendees and uh, the like will get the video shown. So if you have any pre-recorded videos that you want to do, please upload it to YouTube and that's probably the easiest and fastest way to and smoothest way and most reliable way to have it uh, be shown. So screen sharing, actually, I want to see if I could do it. Um, down at the bottom, I have a little icon that says I could share my screen and I should allow it. First, oh, it won't let me share screen. Or oh, let's see. Interesting. Firefox is not letting me, giving me the option to share. Let's see if I can find, where's my, um, Inbox, big blue button. Uh, it still won't allow me to do it. For some reason, Firefox will not let me share this screen. So I don't know if I'll be able to. Nope. Huh. Let's see. Did I change? Extra chat. Boom, boom, boom. So I don't. Entire screen, maybe that. No, doesn't let me share that either. 
oh, I should have actually tried this first before I did the demo. Oh, well. Um, and it won't even let me get rid of it. So unless I block it. Oh, how about this? There. Now do you see it? Nice. OK. Um, it's got, I don't know if it's, is it small like mine? Or do you see it full screen or do you see it? Like, I see a little small thing. We can see the whole screen. OK. Well, yeah, but I'm saying it's inside here, it's a little small, tiny thing. Yeah, you can probably see that. So you see the full it screen. Doesn't create the cascade. Right. The, the cascade, I guess, is much, much smaller. So for what I see. So you can see here, you can see I have this thing that will not go away. <laughs> um, unless I hit block. Um, that's how you share the screen. Down here is the little icon that I used to share the screen. Again, this is the most complex. So if I hit, click it down here, I should turn it off. There we go. And um, what is, I just hit blocked. Hopefully I, I was going to do it again, but I don't know. I just blocked it. So maybe I won't remember that. It's, Cause that's the only way I could get rid of the button. Um, let's see. Now let's go to the next slide. I think I have more with the polls. So here's a poll demo. Now hopefully I can still share the screen. It doesn't block me. Oh, it did. Crap. Let me see if I can. Um, is there a way to unblock it? Because now it says it screen needs to be. Oh, lovely. Oh, there it is. Uh, okay, now let's try it this way. I try again to show you the poll. Go share screen again. Allow. There he goes. There. Now it went away. Uh, you can see this little plus sign. Now, this is where things change slightly differently than uh, in previous years because uh, the here's what you see. Actually, oh, this is new. I just noticed this myself. Actually, I could switch, I guess, between the presentations right here instead of having to click manage presentations and switch. Uh, Guy, do you know if this will actually, all the presentations that are in here will show up in this list so you can easily switch between yes. it? Yes. Okay. Cool. So I guess this is a really nice way that you can switch instead of having to go to manage presentation. Uh, one thing about the manage presentations, I will click on that just to, so if hopefully people can still see this. Um, the current, I clicked on this icon and maybe we'll keep this default. This allows you to download the uh, presentation. A lot of people like to download your slides instead of having to wait for it to be uploaded and whatnot, you could do it here. Um, and what that you'll see is in the presentation, there'll be a little download icon at the down bottom left corner. So on here, I'm going, what I talked about was the poll. I'll hit the start a poll. The polls are a little bit different. Uh, you can write your question and like, you know, And I could click, all these are editable. There's no, um, if you notice, there's no custom poll. I think that might've been before, but if you click here, you can actually change, you know, and, and delete that option. So here I made A, yes, no. Actually I could delete the A and B. We don't need that. And I deleted the last options and I had this. So um, a new thing for this BBB, I could actually make it anonymous. So I don't see who is seeing this. So I can hit the start poll and it will just give me this stuff. And you should have on your screen somewhere. So now I don't actually, if I hit anonymous, I'm curious because I'm not seeing the results. Does it tell you guys that it's anonymous? Or is it just? It does tell you that it's anonymous. OK, cool. So that way you could do anonymous poll so people don't see it. Otherwise, I would see everyone's answer. So when I'm done, I just click Publish publish Poll. And it should show up on the screen. Let me see if I stop share, sharing. I should have done that first. Yes, and you'll see right here that uh, the uh, poll results is posted on the slides. Now this is a, um, right here, it's actually written on the slide. So if I were um, to move to the previous slide and come back, 
it's well, it's still there, actually. It's still running. So what I can do is I could clear it. Now, if I show the screen here, well, let's go to the next slide. So I'll show you what this is. This is a whiteboard demo. If you remember last year, you could do a whiteboard. Also, if you notice, as I move the mouse around, you can see a red dot on the screen. This will be your laser pointer. So if you're talking, you want to stress about a point on the slide, instead of taking, you don't need a laser pointer with you, just move your mouse over it and you'll get a nice little dot to go where you wanted to specify. If I click on the tools, which allows me to draw. So let me share my screen again, just so you see what's going on. Oh, doesn't like to remember anything here. Entire screen allow and it oh it won't let me see the, so, so i'm sharing the screen i can't turn on the polling thing so to show that so let me get rid of that that was presentation but anyway um let's see where's the multi person here now at the bottom with your presenter i could turn on so everyone has can draw what you want. If you click on the hand or at the top or whatever you feel or the um, pencil, you could change it to actual text. So I could actually write text without drawing letters, which is easier than trying to write everything. So this is all being drawn on here. And that poll result that I had previously um was drawing i could get in here and let's see here um to turn turn off your multiple so that now it's everything's fixed and just clean everything up so there's a little garbage can um and if i go back remember this little drawing here that's actual drawing and i believe i could do the same thing by hitting the garbage can because that was drawn on by bbb so we have the whiteboard demo i just want to see it back here if oh, you want to see yeah. the results back they are published on the public chat as well ah. oh that's right and the reason why because i still have the poll up there Oops. let's go back to public chat yeah that's a new another new thing about the uh bbb the public chat which is actually pu private and public chat um i don't know if we have a private chat this year so last year we tr tried to integrate or we integrated the chat with matrix we are still going to have a matrix uh server where each microconference and uh probably will have more like hack rooms and such so a bunch of rooms where you'll be able to log in and everyone could talk on the matrix server so people that are remote and attending uh in person could access and talk to each other in one location that's uh, there but we may or may not have the public chat integrated with matrix um like i said bbb has been updated, so everything um, has to basically be done from scratch again for all the things that all the little uh, tweaks that we did in the previous years. Um, if we get it done, we can. If we're not, um, the new public chat is better than it used to be, so it's maybe it's not so bad that we're using public chat. Uh, there's also a shared note. So if you look down at these, um, I guess someone did just uh, yes, Matthew. Thank you. Uh, private chat works as well. The uh, shared notes is uh, e like an etherpad. So in the shared notes, we'd like to have, especially microconference runners or whatnot, this is where you want to actually uh, keep notes of your microconferences. Uh, we may ask for summaries again uh, after, after the fact. So, and it's really good to have information of what was discussed at the microconference. Remember, Linux Plumbers is a working conference and I, don't believe that Linux Plumbers is successful unless I see patches sent out to the mailing list that said that starts off saying this work is a result of the conversations we had at the Linux Plumbers microconference or in the BOF or whatever. I see a lot of that was after every year uh, after Plumbers. I I always look for that in the Linux Chrome mailing list. I have you know. Um, filters on it looking for plumbers mentioning and I find a lot of mentions about you know work being done from Linux plumbers so I consider this a working conference uh, that's very productive having notes is key uh, I've run several micro conferences before and I find that I sometimes forget what was said even though we're going to try to we're also going to try to keep everything recorded we are live streaming 
Uh, we're doing the same thing we did last year where we have a free lot YouTube live stream of the conference. So make sure everyone uses a catch box and does speak into a microphone because if you don't speak in the microphone, um, this will be a large portion of the audience not being able to hear you. We're going to have the live audience this year and those that can participate um, as we are right now through BBB. <clears throat> so <clears throat> although it's going to be recording, I find that having notes is a lot better than having to sit through three hours of video trying to find out, wait, what was discussed back then? Uh, ideally, we are going to be able to have everything um, parsed again so you can find uh, the microconference, each microconference uh, broken up and whatnot, but it's still a lot better if you have good notes um, written down. So I encourage everyone that's running a microconference to have uh, someone at least trying to keep up with what's going on. Um, and finally, I mentioned uh, video streams. So <clears throat> um, if you're doing, if you have any demo that you wanna do, it's probably better to have a record it up front, put it up to YouTube and show it that way than trying to do uh, the live stream through your computer. Because unless you have a really powerful computer, but most people have powerful computers today. So it shouldn't be an issue. And with that, um, I, oh, yes. Just want to go through of how to handle remote questions. So I put down before this used to be how to handle questions because previously this was the only way uh, to interact with each other at Plumbers through when it was just a virtual event. But now that we're hybrid, I really want to make sure that remote attendees are not considered like second, second class citizens here, that they're given um, just as much participation time as people that are live. Um, so please, we're going to try to keep track or at least probably if you know, if we don't have the integrated matrix server, um, I'll probably suggest people that are moderating uh, room to be able to keep, keep the matrix server up for that particular talk or microconference so that they can look for any questions. And then, you know, if the people like from the live, <clears throat> excuse me, from YouTube or whatnot, and encourage people that are virtual to turn on their camera and to interact with that. So since they're not training here, uh, it's a lot of virtual people are not uh, going through this training. Although like I said, hopefully record this and post this up. We would like um, you to encourage people that are remote to please, if they have a question, turn on their camera and uh, contribute or have a comment or whatever. Again, Plumbers is more of a discussion oriented conference. It's not really just here's what I have, please. And then you can ask questions. It's more about talking about ideas and then hearing ideas from people that are in the audience. Again, we'll have the public chat you know, and the shared notes. Um, and I already mentioned about the uh, dedicated uh, my conference channel and chat. And with that, again, I just want to thank uh, the sponsors. Again, without the sponsors, we wouldn't have this. Um, one thing I also want to mention is um, you can see down here, the EBBF is live streaming at least one of the days in one of the rooms or whatnot. So you will see this type of slide here. I want everyone as um, microconference leads or anyone starting the rooms, all rooms, please stop to thank the sponsors again if it wasn't for them you would not have this opportunity to be here and for the live streaming room or if one day they actually they're sponsoring us for a live streaming event we'll probably have a dedicated slide for ebbf to say you know we're live streaming we do want to mention that so um please take note of that i think i covered pretty much anything i probably forgot something i'm sure i did um any questions i should go to the chat Okay, Ron, Ron, right? You uh, can turn on your camera. On my, you can oh. try it. Yeah, sure. Um, I'm just wondering on other conferences, no, I'm not allowed to, on other conferences, the, they have a time delay. Um, I'm just wondering if that will be true here. Uh, for the live video, there is. Okay. For the live stream, but yeah. here right now, as I'm talking, basically we we're discussing back and forth. We're using BBB, so it's just it's as I mentioned in the beginning, the room is just basically another participant of the virtual conference. So hopefully there's not as much delay. Um, but if for the live stream for YouTube, there is a delay 
like a, probably a couple minute delay. So if, if you get a question from the live stream, it might be a few minutes late. Okay, thanks. So, okay, any other questions? If you guys wanna try your camera, feel free to uh, turn your cameras on. Let's see how well, and also, oh, if you notice, there's a little presentation thing at the bottom. You can minimize your presentation and maximize it. I even share my, do one more share. So you wanna make sure, especially if you're anyone here attending, actually, I'm gonna do a poll. I just had a quick question about the microconference rooms on Matrix. Will each microconference have their own room? Yes. Okay, perfect. Or chat channel or whatever you want to say, yeah. Okay, thank you. Yes, one real room and one virtual room. <laughs> uh, there's, yeah, there we go. No one on the noise so that they're not attending. People's environment, but no one repeats. There you go. So four of you are remote. I make sure. Okay, so the four at least that are remote. Ideally, you would turn on your camera just to make sure it works if you want, or uh, make sure. Yes. Yep. So, uh, is you guys presenting remotely? See, um, shoot, there was something else I wanted to mention, but about the remote um, attendees of this year, um, I can't quite remember it. Uh, anything else? Dave, do uh, you have anything to add? No, I don't think so. Sorry, I was just finding it. Um, Firefox is using my wrong microphone. I don't see what to switch, but I think you can hear me. Yep. I think we covered everything. Um, are we really likely to change to federated chat with matrix between now and uh, next week? That's not going to happen, right? We don't know. <laughs> Probably not. But if it is very smooth, who knows? We may. I think this chat probably. I'll give it a try. I don't know if I have the time to do it, but I'll try. Thank you. Uh, Jackie, raise your hand. Uh, hi, sorry. I think I just uh, get disconnected. So I'm wondering whether we can uh, uh, do. We need a speaker uh, to be in person to to present a slides, or can we present a slides, you know, directly online? Um, so, <clears throat> okay. So, if are you going to be in person, or just are you going to be remote? I will be remote, but we. I would have my colleague in person so we are deciding you know right now should, should he you know carry over the the, the talk or should uh, can i you know present myself you can present yourself and in fact i i'm going to do that right now i'm going to make you a presenter um so i just promoted you to a presenter so now this is what you'll have we're doing everything through bbb for this per so now you could actually go and change the slides you could you know flip around the, to the slides and even upload a slide if you want so, ah. so that's how easy it is I to see. present. Okay, thanks a lot. Yeah, perfect. And I'll take back presenter. Okay, thanks. Any other questions? Let's see, so um, because this isn't a fully remote conference, so I'm not, I didn't want to push too hard and make sure everything works. So most of the people here are going to be live. We're going to, and we're going to be. There's going to be people there to help you. Hopefully, a lot of people will help. So uh, we don't have to focus so much on this. So I think we covered most everything. Uh, 
Um, I have a question for the referee track. This is Jonathan for the referee track, right? Um, I suppose mm -hmm. there will be a referee there. So how do I know who is the referee for my session? And uh, I think that it would be best to like coordinate beforehand. Yes, the uh, referee track, there will be someone there that will be refereeing and that what they are most likely are going to be the one that's going to be the moderator of BBB and give you the um, presentation. Um, <clears throat> or probably introduce you and whatnot. If you're live, they'll be there. If not, uh, if you look on to the, to the left side of the user list, the square box says that shows that all the moderators. So my name's up there, the LPC admin's up there. Everyone else is a circle box. And the circle box means that they're just a participant. The, cir the little circle on the icon there is a microphone. Tell us how you joined. If it's a uh, circle with a little microphone, that means that you're joined with being able to speak. If it's red, it means that they're on mute. If it's a little headset, they're only listening. They actually are not joined um, to be able to speak. Ideally, if you're, especially if you're in the conference, do not join listening or, so, or, or I mean just speaking, only join maybe listening. Uh, at most and maybe even everything mute so that way we don't get echoes and so I could see someone join with their microphone on their own laptop um, and that could cause issues within a room so uh, it's going to be a new experience for us we've never done this before so uh, please just uh, we'll try to do the best we can uh, there was a question I saw here in the conference room when giving the presentation what's the best practice to engage with the room and remote attendees again uh, this is the presentation that we're using so this screen that you see with the people up, up on top with the uh, video uh, the webcams open that's going to be the presentation so when a someone that's remote that wants to participate and ask a question we're um, encourage them to turn their webcam on because they'll show up in the room and appear by the presentation. So if you're turning around or if you're looking at your laptop, because it'll be the same thing, you'll see someone appears up. So that's the easiest way to get people to uh, participate that are not in the room themselves. Let's see, what's the, uh, what will the stage set up be? Slot ups. Will we have access to our own? Web? Oops. It's really hard to see here, but I just wanted to add on that point you were just making. If you're joining as the presenter, there's a button right here that says leave audio that you can see. So if you accidentally connect, you can click there to disconnect both inbound and outbound audio that will ease the load on your machine. You can still separately share the webcam if you want. And when you're the presenter, on the top right corner, there'll be a triple dot that still allows you to go full screen so if you want to watch your slides full screen on that display, you can do that up here on the upper right corner of the presentation area. Yes, thank you, uh, Gia. Yeah, it's actually, yeah, I just noticed that today. I think that's a new feature as well, is it, or was it always there? It was uh, you can always hear it last year. Was it? Okay, so you could also, I think, you, can you, yeah, there's going to be a room. You actually change the side. You could, like I said, just make the uh, uh, presentation disappear by hitting a little presentation thing. You also could change the size between the, what you see, uh, the presentation and uh, of the video of all the webcams. Uh, someone asked about the using their own laptop. Um, again, we'll have a Chromebook up on top that you could use, but like I said, if you want to use it, uh, the way you would use your own laptop ideally is you'd have to connect to the BBB server. Um, you don't need to get to the microphone, should still be in the room, so you don't have to, you could probably even connect with the listen only mode. Ideally, you probably, yes, you have to connect with the listen only mode and you could do all your presentations. I believe, okay, now the question is, if you're in listen-only mode, can you be a presenter? I'm assuming you can. Uh, yep, I can make people that are in listen-only mode presenters. So um, you'll be speaking using the microphone within the room, but your laptop will be connected to BBB. If you need to do it yourself, uh, that's easier. Um, we would recommend that you have everything set up right away so we could do a transition between the previous speaker and you right away. So uh, if you have, you could talk to one of the uh, people that um, are there a moderator or one of the planning committee or people that are helping out? Uh, we're, we're here to help you out to s make sure that uh, everything runs smoothly and make sure that your laptop and everything's working the way uh, it needs to be for your presentation. So um, as usual, so we have, we'll have those yellow lanyards on our badges. Uh, you'll be able to see us in person. I had one question. Have we decided whether we're going to have the same shepherd physically in the room and moderating the BBB room? Why not? <laughs> Um, okay. You have your laptop open in the room, just looking at the. <laughs> yeah, okay. Cool. Yep. 
probably so, easier. Um, because in the morning, the first day in the morning of the of the conference, right? Um, is there? A, should we go? To, should the presenter? Could the presenter go to a room to get some training or like talk to the organizer or just just to get a feeling about how it is set up, who to talk to, if there's any last minute question, that kind of thing. Um, what we might do is maybe the first day um, before and like around nine o'clock, maybe have some sort of just you know training or idea for everyone. I mean, I could I could set that up. Uh, I'd be happy to um, run that for the first day. Um, probably, yeah. probably probably won't be able to do it every day. Yeah. But yeah, I think that would be helpful. Bye. When I have my micro conference on Wednesday in the afternoon, sure. should I arrive in the room a certain time before and there's some preparation done be, be, before the micro uh, conference starts? Uh, you probably should just arrive just a little bit early, um, but most of it, I, ideally, you would upload all your slides, because uh, we'll probably ask everyone. You could do it even from your room. You could upload all the presentations. You just have to log into log into BBB. Uh, we'll have an account. We'll tell you where your room is um, for like we did last year. You upload all your slides, and we will have a uh, Chromebook there. So if you want to use your own machine, you just bring your machine with you. Uh, but a Chromebook will already be set up to the projector and everything else uh, running yes. that slide. Yes. So we're not switching anything out of the projector. That's going to be we have one machine connected to the projector, so we don't have to worry about. Switch, switching around, playing with you know the AV of each everyone's laptop. Um, your presentation is going through BBB. Can I upload the slides already into the BBB uh, attached to my micro conference before the conference starts, or a day, or at least a, a day or two before from the hotel room, or not? I don't believe so. I believe reason why is because we don't have a room. We don't have a specific room for your microconference. It's basically we have each every day we'll have a room, a single room. So the microconferences are broken up by rooms and we will say, okay, this day uh, you'll be using the same microconference room as the, the microconferences from the previous day. Uh, yes. Does that make sense? So I'm not so sure how many services we need. I come half an hour before I get, I get half an hour before the micro conferences before my micro conference starts into my micro conference room, mm -hmm. and then I upload uh, uh, the slides. You ought to be able to do that the evening before, right? Because yeah. in fact, the only problem with uploading them the day before is that there'll be so many presentations to choose from when the one who, yesterday's who are, are flipping through. So, so it's polite to only upload them the, the night before, right? ends from the hotel room before going to bed or so. Uh, That's improved, yeah. the slides. Yeah. So, so when I, I get a link, but, what is my room where to upload the slides before? Yeah, we'll make sure that all the uh, microconference runners will get a link to saying, this is your room, please upload now. We'll, we'll try to keep you, sending you emails for that. Yes, the rooms yes. are only available one hour before the session starts. Oh, is it? Yes. Okay. So, okay, you won't be able to do it before one hour. I guess you'll have to wait one hour before your session. So you can't yes, do it the yes. day. So that I uh, I uh, make sure that one hour before that in the last hour before the, my session starts that I am in my session room. Yes. Correct. Yeah. Yes. Yes. Yeah. So that when I'm on the OSS in the morning that I'm back in time. Well, like I said, you could log. It just have to be on in your session one hour before in BBB. You don't actually yes. have to be in the room. Ah, yes. With my laptop, I can upload the slides. Yes, yes. great. Yes, if you upload the slide on your laptop, all laptops will that connect to that room will have access to those slides. Yes, yes. So it's our responsibility to also purge the slides from our room before the next room. Starts. No, no. I think that's going to be our responsibility. <laughs> okay. That's yeah, so uh, trying to keep um, you know the microconference runners only focusing on their microconference. Uh, we only ask you to do the slides, just make sure everything smooth, uh, goes smoothly. Once your microconference is over, you're basically done. It's up to the planning committee to make sure that everything's set for the next microconference. And also, well, the one thing we do recommend, because sometimes we do forget, is I believe there's a way if you go to the top of the um, like the public chat and the top of the um, 
uh, share notes, there's a little three dots and there's a way to save it. I would recommend saving your notes because when we clear this, it, that gets cleared too. So, and it is actually, I think, I think we did actually go through and find where they were before, at least the matrix server, we were able to do it. Uh, the matrix server is a little bit harder to save, but the shared notes and everything else, I believe, gets dis is destroyed once we close everything down. Oh, that's another thing is when you leave, do not end the microconference. I'm not sure if we're going to give you guys moderator access. We may or may not. We may just have it. So, uh, when you click, when you're a um, moderator inside a room, you could, there's, when you hit the exit, there's two uh, exit ways, end meeting and leave meeting. Sad part is, I noticed the leave meeting is red. That's the one you want to click. If you hit end meeting, it stops everything and you could lose the notes and you lose everything else. So I tell people to save the notes locally for yourself because if we forget to do that, then uh, it, they could be lost. So and it would really how long, the notes. how yeah. long will they be alive when the when the micro micro conference ends and especially i'm in the very last round and i hope that they do not start to take down everything be before i really uh, yeah. stop the live me uh, micro conference not not clicking something but ending the conversations inside the room not that it well, happens uh, that already before because it's 1830 they shut everything down and delete everything and everything gets lost because it's the very very last round in which i am no don't worry the, there will be someone in the room that will shut everything down so ah, it won't yes. be it won't be done remotely there'll be yes. someone when everything when they come into the room and they see we see that or there'll probably be a shepherd or someone to help you out to make sure everything goes technically right so there should be some like a planning someone from the planning committee in every single room running at every single time so that if there's any issues there's someone there they're the, one, the person in the room will be the one that will be responsible for saving everything shutting everything down so they won't do it until you leave the room yes yes great so that i know that i can save at any time when the conversations yeah. end and then simply walk over to the closing ceremonies and that's it yes and it may be me because I'm the one that's responsible for the laptops that are going to be in those rooms. So I, I may just I may tell people to just leave them running. And then when I go and actually shut the laptops down, I could do all the work. I could do the saving and everything else. So I have to hit every single room and do that at the end of the day. Ah, uh, yes. Uh, raised hand, Dave. Tyler, Taylor? Taylor? Yes, yes, you can pass to Dave. Yep. Uh, yeah, so I was just asking about the raised hands and can attendees see who else has raised hands and if so, how? You talked about how we can see like who's muted and who's just on audio only, but how, do, uh, how does anybody actually see who has raised hands? Um, is there, I don't know, I'm a presenter, so I don't know if, if it's only a presenter that sees the raised hands. So I see a bunch I of raised hands. I have my hand now. Do you see it or can you share the screen? I see, I see a bunch of. Can you share yeah, your screen? A bunch of people say that they've raised their hands, but it, as far as I can tell, attendees can't unless I'm missing it. And so I, mean, I, I can't see who has raised hands. So we can't see if we're okay. first if, in if line, up, the only person with their hand Dave, up, or if there's Dave, the Dave, 26 Dave, people. Dave, 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 if you look at the, if you look at the list to the left, you see that uh, I've got MA in front of my name right now, and I put my hand up, and the MA gets replaced with a hand icon. It does not unmark. And it, it moves me right to the top of the list. I can see right now Dave Taylor, Connell Dooley, Till Camper, Monica, no. Josh, oh. all have their hands raised. Oh, the, um, yeah. If you look at the little circle, you see inside the circle there, the instead of having your icon for your name, you see a little hand. Ah, uh, yes, I see it now. Yes. I, I see it now. There seems to be a little bit of time delay. So thank you. When you when you first said it uh, and stuff jumped up, it didn't happen, but it happened about 10 seconds later. So thank you. I guess that's even in the order. Okay, cool. Uh, now everyone's turned off their raised hands. Um, any other questions? As the, the other thing is as the, as the presenter, you'll see the raised hand on the upper right corner of your screen. It, it, you see, but if you're presenting full screen, I hope it doesn't overwrite your slides, but we'll see. Actually, um, let me try something here. Uh, just while I'm presenting, well, full, if you're full screen, I don't know if you're if someone, I mean, if I was presenting my screen, sharing screen, 
before. Yeah, right now I'm full screen. I don't see anything. I just see my slides. But I don't think a presenter needs to be full screen, do they? Uh, so. No, no, you don't. Yeah. But if I'm sharing my screen, oops, that's not the share screen. Oh, I'm not presenter right now. So I'll take presenter. Um, if I share my uh, screen, your screen, I hit allow. And if you can see up here, the top is people's raised hands. So I guess, yeah, I mean, if I'm sharing my screen, of course, if I'm doing something on another window, you won't probably won't, I won't see it. But you see, this is what I see as presenter up here when people raise their hands. But again, if I switch screens, I won't be seeing raised hands until I get back to the presentation. Uh, let's see. I wasn't really keeping up with all the conversation going on in there. Hopefully, all the questions were answered. That would be the chat. New ultra low latency services from YouTube Live. This is impressive, uh, Steve. You're <laughs> basically real time on YouTube as well. There's maybe really? like 600 milliseconds delay, maybe 500 milliseconds delay, but it's virtually real time. Awesome. It's not. It's not going to be next week because I don't know how uh, they're going to do it. But if we did it this way, it's virtually real time. Cool. Um, so Jonathan, uh, you I guess had a raise hand. Right. Um, so I, I think uh, what I heard is that the MC chairs would upload presentation to the BBB tool. So how would the presenters upload presentations to the MC chairs? Oh, uh, actually, well, wait. Are you a presenter? For, I mean, are you presenting at an MC or are you like one of the referee tracks? I actually have both. Okay. For so we're asking all the MC leads to ask all the presenters to send them the PDFs or presentations in any format that they get to upload. Um, okay, so, but for the uh, referee tracks, I believe we'll probably have one of the pro pro planning committee people asking for, um, actually we have also the tool, uh, the tool change track, uh, the, the uh, next uh, here, I believe. So, and I don't know if the networking BPF track is here. Uh, but, anyway, but the leads of that is responsible for uploading all the slides. Um, so each track is going to have a lead that is responsible for um, up, doing all the uploads. So the presenters should not have to do it unless you're one of the leads. I think there sure, was a question sure. about sharing them. So Jonathan, the, what we would like in the second order presenters is you should attach your materials to your session in Indico. So if you go back to lpc.events to your session, you will be able to add materials in there and then we we will be able to download it from that. Um, oh, thanks. I didn't know about that. Okay. Yeah. I'll that's right. Okay. I forgot about that too. <laughs> yes, that's what we did last year, especially since it was easier. So yeah, if you put it there, we ask people to go to Indico and, and download it there. And that way also um, the planning committee and we also, if we want to publish your slides, uh, we'll, the, the planning committee will actually have access to it. Yeah, um, when would it be the last date the planning people would want us to upload? I mean, for us, we want to like keep iterating it, right? But for your, for your purpose, you want it to be there as soon as possible. So let's well, end today week or? <laughs> it's like you said, we're going to do it one hour before. It has to be done one hour before the, um, the track starts. Yeah, okay. So it's, if you do get it up there within one hour before, at least probably even a little bit, probably earlier than that because um, the track leads will probably start downloading before that, but they can't upload it. Or just send a note, if you're gonna be late, send a note saying, hey, I'm gonna have to upload it later. What's actually kind of nice about this is the presenter can, up, we can upload slides at any time. And I've done this before where someone gave me a slides to upload what, during a talk. And what I did is actually, I noticed the person was stuck on one, or was staying on one slide as they're doing the discussion. I stole the presenter uploaded the slides and then gave back the presenter to the person who was speaking and they never even noticed. Um, although they probably, if they're looking at their screen, they probably would have noticed that the icons have changed. But yeah, you could actually at any time upload slides. Nice. Um, let's see, there's uh, Dave or you have your hand raised? Um, yeah, since this one will actually be hybrid, 
I didn't know if there was any recommendations for how to do queue management during the actual sessions when you have hands being raised remotely and in person. So, for example, I've seen some conferences say uh, during uh, COVID times that if you're in person, you have to go to the tool to raise your hand on so in the tool, uh, which then makes everybody actually try to join in there and introduces a barrier. And so is this is there any guideline here? Or is it really just up to the moderator to just call on people or whatever? So. I guess it's probably up to the moderator. Actually, I didn't even think about this part. So it's something I probably should discuss. We probably should discuss and maybe we'll come up with something. I mean, it actually sounds like a good idea to tell everyone to use the tool. But then another thing is that means everyone has to be logged in. So a lot of people may have their laptop down or not even bring their laptop to the room. And we don't want to force people to have their laptop with them in the room so they could go in there. So um, we don't even have ordering in the hand queue, do we? We can just look at who's raised their hands. But I don't think we've got any literal yep. Queue yeah, there. It, it, I think we'll just yeah, ask the it, 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 uh, to help. It sorts them in order. So the first person to yeah. raise their hand will be at the top of the list. Also, in the room, you have the catch box. That's a good equalizer. So you don't let somebody ask a question until they get the catch box. And you can see mm -hmm. there's somebody queuing up live. And I would suggest maybe giving priority to those people and make sure they get a chance to chime in. But I think the catch boxes will eliminate some of those issues at plumbers because they're a good equalizer for conversing in the room. Yeah. Yes, and one thing for, for getting uh, uh, the best out of discussion which is remote and discussion which is local, what I will do in the open printing microconference, I will work with a two-person crew. I will have Monica. She will take care of the remote uh, uh, questions and contributions, but she looks onto a screen and sees when someone raises hands through the, through the software and so on. And I will take care of the audience in the room during the discussion. So this is much easier than when one person has always to look on his screen and see whether something come, came from remote and to look at the audience, whether some something is from the inside. If we had only the audience, the audience simply needs to fight for the catch box like in a, in a football game, but we have also the remote people. Mm -hmm. well, I, well, we'll see. Like I said, we have done this before and this is going to be uh, experience that we find out um, when we do it. Uh, Laurent actually asked, you know, is it, you know, if you upload it to Indigo, do you not have to upload to BBB? Again, we want all presenters to upload to Indigo, um, regardless. Yeah, uh, the moderators and the track runners are the ones that are going to have, to, or that's going to actually have to upload it to BBB. So um, presenters don't have to do anything. To upload to BBV, that should be in the um, that should be the responsibility of the track runners and the uh, MC runners. Uh, but if you're um, but just because you go to Indigo doesn't mean it's going to actually be in BBV. That's two different systems. It's to but the thing is, if you're a track runner, stuff you should have access to uh, the review. If you have access to the reviewing of all the processes, you have access to all the slides that were uploaded. Other questions? I think that, oops. Okay, John. So I was just kind of curious, uh, given some of the troubles that have happened in the past with the uh, network connectivity, um, is there any concern if everyone locally in the room is connecting via Big Blue Button and uh, basically generating the video streams? Um, even if they're participating just in the room, but just just to be able to have chat access. Um, I was curious if there's any way to kind of mitigate or advice that we might want to say to kind of, you know, is, is there a way to turn off the video streams while you're connected to Big Blue Button? Uh, we might we might want to check. The only thing I'm worried about is right now, Big Blue Button has done a lot of changes internally. So, I mean, I was talking with Guy earlier uh, today that the servers could handle so much better or handle the load so much better. My concern will actually be more of the uh, network connectivity within the uh, hotel itself. So if everyone is maxing out the bandwidth within the hotel, that could cause an issue. So we may ask, you know, if you're a, again, that's why we probably don't want the, uh, the in-person people to use the race to hand. If you don't need to be connected to BBB, don't be connected to BBB. The only people that we want really connected to BBB that's in-person in are the speakers 
uh, that way you can uh, set everything up so um, <clears throat> uh, be ready to switch if you want to use your own laptop. Yes, one thing about what will get projected. I think if we, while we are giving uh, the, the talks, the, the talks with the slides, that we should show on the projection screen the slides in, 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 a, in a big uh, uh, window as, as we have it now. And over yeah. or at the side of them, the, the webcam images of the persons who are speaking. But nothing more. But I think when we go, get, go to the discussion, we should perhaps even show the sh chat column so that people who are sitting in the room can read the chat on the projection screen. Is this possible? Well, like I said, we could do that. We, and um, it it's, could be um, whoever's at the podium could actually have control. I believe the projector will be whatever laptop that we have already set up. You could change. The, we'll have the presenter and, the, and how they change their view um, will probably determine what's on the screen, uh, depending on how much uh, the slides need. Again, a lot of these things are discussions, so there's probably not going. There shouldn't be that many slides, and the slides should just basically yeah, be so that we can have the discussion right. column all, all the time open. Yeah. This is even yeah. better yeah. because why, when the speaker's presenting slides in the middle of the presentation, it can be that someone mm -hmm. writes something into the chat and so everyone can see it. It's, this is even better. We should have as default everything which we are seeing now in this session, mm -hmm. not necessarily the very left column with, a pe with all the people who are listening, but the column with a, with a chat the big, uh, the big uh, uh, space with a, with a slide or the chart screen, and over the big space, the small spaces, the, the small strip where one sees uh, the faces of the people who are speaking. So I'm just going to share my screen here. Um, so if you see my screen here, I just moved it. So here we have the uh, discussion all the way to the left here. And I put it so I just, just so I could see the raised hands, if there were any. Ah, yes, so this I is a good layout for the project. And then I also made it so that the, this is a little bit, the screen here is uh, bigger than, but the cameras come up here lower. Yes. We should it do this way. Yep, and we could do. We could decide this at the conference. Yes, yes. <clears throat> Give this as a guideline because probably every micro conference one or track leader uh, has has other ideas, but this would be a good uh, suggestion. And I'll be setting up the. Uh, like I said I'll be setting up the uh, laptops every day. That'll be connected to the projectors, and I could set it up. Uh, over yes, yes, this, the, this yeah. is the default. Yeah. Okay. Any other questions? I mean, that's actually top of the hour. Um, I want to thank everyone for coming. Uh, there's going to be another one uh, uh, tomorrow. What's it? 900 uh, UTC, I believe it is. Um, I'll go ahead and save all the chats out before I kill it, but I'm going to stop recording right now. Um, again, thanks everyone for attending. And I'm hoping that we are, I'm looking forward to actually seeing a lot of you guys in person uh, and also still seeing some of you remotely. And I really hope that this is um, uh, what's it called a uh, successful and fun conference. And obviously, most importantly, a very safe conference as well. So um, see you everybody.